Now it was a very, very close vote, and the uh, just over, uh, just under 51 percent in favor of the opposition, the no vote, just under 50 percent uh, for the pro Chavez vote. Um, it was so close, and the opposition was certainly expecting a very, very close vote somehow, one way or the other, would go pro Chavez. But in fact, it didn't, and and the institution of the election process itself seems to have held up remarkably well. Uh, how, how will this affect uh, the, the, the view of the opposition and, and, and how people see Chavez? Well, the opposition certainly feels extremely strengthened and emboldened now. And uh, they're basically saying, well, this shows you know, that Chavez is not uh, unbeatable and uh, that we can win more elections and defeat Chavez in the near future. Um, Chavez himself took the whole thing in stride and says, you know, savor your victory for now, uh, but uh, this is just a, uh, a defeat for us that is uh, temporary and will continue to push on. So he was quite defined in that sense, but also very conciliatory and very um, statesmanlike, I thought. I was a little bit uh, afraid that given his uh, la recent conflicts with the King of Spain that he would uh, pout or something like that, but actually he, uh, he was able to um, rise to the occasion, really, and uh, gave credit where credit was due and, and recognized that this meant that uh, they would have to enter a time of reflection. The fact that he is, he's abiding by the decision, and it was ex extremely close, uh, uh, the, uh, this, will this actually in some ways increase his credibility or strength in Venezuela? I mean, I think the, the suspicion uh, behind which a lot of people didn't vote for this, this quote-unquote power grab, which is a phrase which I think every media organization in the world has used about a hundred times, uh, using the words power grab, uh, but the accusation of dictatorship and so on and so on, uh, the fact that he's actually abiding by the rules here in, in such a close vote, w will it in fact in some way strengthen him with some of the people that have had such grave doubts about him? Yes, I certainly think so. Uh, I mean, people were uh, openly saying that Chavez would never recognize the results, especially if they're close and so on, and he's proven them all wrong. So uh, I think, and it, and it shows that democracy in Venezuela is, is alive and well, contrary to uh, what uh, the critics of, of the Chavez government are saying, um, and, and confirms pretty much that uh, Chavez is perfectly capable of admitting and accepting defeat, which is something that the opposition never wanted to believe here. In his uh, speech after the uh, results were known, he used a very uh, phrase, a famous phrase, very well known to Venezuelans, where he accepted his defeat uh, for now, uh, which he said in a, in a coup he tried to organize, uh, what is it, uh, uh, 10 years ago uh, or more. Um, what does he mean for now? What, what, what's next for uh, Chavez after this setback? Well, he promised that he would not change a single comma in this reform proposal. Now, clearly, according to the Constitution, he cannot um, resubmit this uh, proposal in, during this uh, legislative period. Uh, but uh, it seems like he definitely intends on uh, bringing about many of the changes that uh, were promised in the reform, those that can be uh, introduced without um, changing the Constitution. And um, he, I, he still leaves open the possibility of uh, changing uh, the Constitution in some other way in the near future, perhaps um, shortly before uh, he, he's up for, uh, shortly before he would have to leave the presidency. So sometime before, it's, I think it's 2012, where, where his term would be up, in theory he could, he could have another referendum allowing him to run again. What was the turning point in this? Uh, a, a few months ago, the opposition was disorganized. It had no momentum. Uh, the, wh why did, how did the opposition gain such strength in a relatively short amount of time? I think uh, they managed to uh, coordinate around the, the, a certain um, set of messages. Uh, it, they uh, really seem to have the help of some uh, public relations firm or something. I mean, the brochures that they came out with were really high gloss, very professional, um, and very well coordinated in terms of their messages. So I, so I think that really made the difference because at first, when Chavez first presented the proposal, uh, it looked like it would fly with, uh, you know, would go by with uh, an, an overwhelming advantage. But once the campaign really started, they managed to swing this around. And I, I really think it was mostly uh, the combination of the confusion over the issues and, uh, and the coordination, the well-coordinated message from the, uh, uh, from the opposition. 
It, it all seemed to begin with the closing of the television station a few months ago, which I think a lot of people didn't quite understand why it was being done or how it was being done. And it seemed to engage the students uh, who, who hadn't been so engaged previously. The students uh, were, became an important factor, although um, I'm not so sure if closing of the television station really played any role in this particular referendum. That is, people here saw those as two very separate issues. And like I said, when uh, Chavez first proposed his uh, proposal in August, that was already several months after the television station uh, went off the air. So, um, and, and at that time, you know, it looked like it was going, the reform was going to pass without any problems. So I really think um, it was really the reform itself that, that um, uh, was to blame, so to speak. And of course, the students played an important role, uh, which, uh, because they presented a new face to the opposition, an unused face, uh, one that hasn't yet been discredited uh, the way the rest of the opposition had been discredited. So they played an important role, although I think people tend to overestimate it as well because uh, the, uh, it's not a one student movement, it's actually a, a, a pretty strongly divided student movement into both pro-Chavez and opposition camps. There were reports that in the barrios, in the poor areas around Caracas and, and throughout Venezuela, that had traditionally been the strongholds of uh, Chavez support, that there, even there, there was uh, g opposition gained strength, at least opposition to this particular referendum. Um, is, there, is there a feeling that the promises are not being kept? Is there, is there as we're hearing in, in a lot of the Western press, that there's a kind of disillusionment in some of the barrios, that things are not happening nearly as quickly as people hope for or thought should? Uh, I think some of that is probably setting in. But uh, on the other hand, if you, the same polls that predicted that Chavez would lose the referendum, that is the opposition polls, those very same polls still say and, uh, that uh, Chavez is immensely popular, that he enjoys over 60% of support from the population and far more that in the barrios. And so I think that aspect is probably being exaggerated, although certainly uh, there are some people who, who feel like uh, more changes need to come faster, which explains partly why Chavez wanted to push this reform so quickly, because he thought that uh, by pushing this reform so quickly, he would be able to deliver more in less time.